Hello. Okay, today I will explain time borrowing for my own reference. In case I ever forget, I can come back to this and look at it. So, say we have a pipeline data path like this um, three registers, one, two, three, A, B, C, and you have some combinational logic in between with uh, combinational one and combinational two. They all, they all have their own delays. They both have their own delays. Combinational one would have a delay of uh, four nanoseconds. Combinational two will have a delay of two nanoseconds. So, um, and we want the clock to, to clock period to be three nanoseconds. So, um, from clock edge one to two, you would have uh, you have three nanoseconds to finish your combinational logic. Your combinational logic circuit will have to settle within three nanoseconds, which is a problem because uh, combinational one takes four nanoseconds to finish. So um, you wouldn't have enough time to get valid data. Okay, so uh, for this, we notice that the combinational logic two actually only takes two nanoseconds to finish. That means we can borrow one second over to this cycle, right? So how do we do that? To do this, there are two solutions. First one is to use latches. So uh, as we know, latches are um, level triggered. So when the clock is high, latches is in, a latch is in transparent state. So input data will just flow through to the output data. Um, and we effectively replace reg register B with latch B. So it replaces the register in the middle with a latch. And data will come at, uh, at reg A, data will come at uh, edge one. At edge one to edge two, combinational one, combinational logic one will have to finish within this cycle. But now that we have a latch, this combinational one can finish this uh, finish its um, propagation. Um, have, <clears throat> excuse me. It will have more time to finish the the propagation, and as long as it finishes before this edge, which is edge two point five. Uh, what is edge two point five? Edge two point five is the falling edge of the clock, which means the latch. This will be the transparent state. Uh, all right. Switch over. If I can switch over, holy. Okay, transparent state to the the latch, and this will be this one. This part will be the latching state. So, uh, as long as combinational one finished before latch two, um, uh, edge two point five, which means as long as latch B, um, is within latching state, latch B will get the correct value. And then as long as latch B got, gets the correct value, combination of two will start propagating from, let's say, let's say, um, okay, let's erase all that. Let's say, la let's say combination of one, took four seconds, not four nanoseconds to finish, right? So say it finished right here, right? And now my combinational two circuit will have this much time, which is um, two nanoseconds to finish its propagation, which is perfect because the delay is two nanoseconds and problem solved. And the only problem with this is that the maximum number of uh, maximum amount of time that we can borrow from this cycle cycle two to three to cycle one to two is half a clock cycle. So because it's the nature of latches, right? You have your um, latches only transparent and when clock is high and we assume clock um, duty cycle is 50%. So yeah, that's solution one. And now we'll present solution two, which is adding a buffer. So adding a delay buffer at register B. So we actually, we don't, uh, solution two, we don't replace the register B with a latch B. We just have a delay buffer. So essentially what that means is your clock edge two register B will be delayed. So that 
being delayed, meaning that the sample time at clock edge 2 right here is delayed into this one. So now I just effectively effectively given a combinational one circuit to this much more time to finish. So my buffer can be a uh, delay of one nanoseconds, which is perfect because one plus the three nanosecond clock cycle can be the four nanosecond delay of combinational one. But <clears throat> excuse me. But clock um by borrowing that over the num the amount of available time for combinational two to to propagate is actually subtracted by one nanosecond because um there's a buffer here right there's not a buffer here so this one is not delayed so clock edge to uh register c it's still on um this edge the black clock signal uh with reg uh, with clock on edge three so the uh, amount of time available for combination of two to finish is only from this edge to this edge right and the amount of uh, time that we give combination of one to finish is from this edge to this edge. So one and two. This is the amount of time we borrowed. Okay. So yeah, that's, uh, that is time borrowing. And this one, we can actually borrow as much as we want. Uh, I shouldn't say, I should say as much as we want. Um, we can actually borrow the entire clock cycle over. So as long as the amount of delay of combination of one plus combination of two is less than two clock cycles you can borrow over so you could say uh this is I, I borrowed for this case i borrowed over one nanosecond right so that should be a nanosecond instead I'll fix that later so we borrow one nanosecond right it can actually be way more like here you can borrow you know 2.5 nanoseconds which will still be fine as long as combinational two only takes 0 0.5 nanoseconds to settle we are okay right so there you go that is time borrowing